So to get started and start playing around with ClipChamp, you're obviously going to need to create an account. So go ahead and register if you want to follow along. And once you're in, you'll see your dashboard. So very, very simply, here we can see our API key. We also have a production website domain. So once you're ready to launch your project, you can go ahead and enter your domain in there. That's really important. So no one else can use the ClipChamp button on their website. So for now, because we're going to be testing this on our local machine, we'll be entering a test domain. And if you go under show all settings, you have the ability to enter your test website domain just here. Now we also have the option to hook in several services, the services that we want to enable for uploading. And this is pretty much all the configuration you'll need to do in terms of entering your keys. You won't have to download any additional dependencies. As long as you have your bucket set up, say if you're using S3, then you're good to go. The process is just really quick and easy. So we're gonna be using Amazon S3 for this part. We're gonna set up our bucket and then we're gonna look at the implementation. And later on, we'll look at how to configure something like YouTube, which is incredibly simple. So you've got options here. And of course, later down the line, if any more services were added, then you can just go ahead and enable them. And the switch over is super simple. You don't have to do anything really on your website. Okay, so now that we've seen how this works and we've dived into some of the settings we can see here, we want to go ahead and set up Amazon S3. So if you are following along, make sure you have your test domain put in here and you're going to want to allow upload to AWS S3. And don't worry about the keys just yet. We'll be looking at how we uh, go ahead and grab them from Amazon in just a moment. So first things first, we want to grab our Amazon S3 credentials. So we need to set up an IAM user. So if you go ahead and register for S3, if you don't have an account already, I have a few buckets in here, but we're going to be creating a new bucket and then applying some settings to this. But like I said, we want to go ahead and get our credentials in here. So over up here by your name, you want to go over to security credentials and go over to IAM users. So we're going to go ahead and create a new user and I'm just going to call this ClipChamp. And we want to make sure that we are generating an access key for each user. That's really important. So you'll only see these once. So if you need to go ahead and reuse them anywhere, make sure you copy them down somewhere. You can always download the credentials here. But of course, all we're really doing here is just configuring this with ClipChamp. So all we need to do is just copy these over here and go ahead and apply these save changes. So now that that's done, we are good to set up our bucket and then later we can implement the button and this will just work like magic. Okay, so now that we have these set up, let's go back to our user because we just need to go ahead and enable some permissions. We need to attach a policy here. So let's go and attach a policy. Let's just type S3 and we want S3 full access. This will allow ClipChamp to go ahead and write to uh, your S3 account or at least store videos there. So let's attach this policy and we're done. We're done with users so we can head over, over to services, over to S3 and we can start to set up our bucket. So if you've not worked with S3 before, think of this as just a storage area, almost like a directory you'd find on your computer. Now I'm going to call mine videoupload.codecourse.com. So I'm just going to go ahead and write this in here. And I'm going to leave the region. That will just choose a default region for me. Now, because we'll be making cross-origin requests, remember we're doing everything from the browser. These videos aren't being uploaded to ClipChamp servers. They're going directly from your user's browser into Amazon S3. So we need to set up a cause policy on the bucket or the browser will reject our request. Okay, so if we go over and click on our bucket and head over to the properties part just here, under permissions, we can add a cause configuration. We'll also be adding a bucket policy a bit later and we'll see why that is. Okay, so the default cause configuration won't work. So if you head over to the course downloads, 
you'll find the cores configuration here. So if it changes, I'll go ahead and update this, but you're gonna go ahead and just paste that in. Pretty straightforward. And essentially all we have here are just the permissions to allow our browser to go ahead and upload. So we don't really need to worry about this too much. You can find this on the ClipChamp documentation as well if you wanna go ahead and copy it from there. So let's save this out and close this off and we are pretty much done. So we wanna go ahead and create a folder. So I'd recommend not storing your videos all in the root of this bucket. We're gonna separate them just in case we need different locations later on. Okay, so it depends now if you want your videos to be publicly available. So later on, we'll be building that video upload website. Of course, when you use upload to video, we're gonna need them to be public. Now, otherwise, you'll need to set up a bucket policy. So if you want them to be private, leave this. Otherwise, we'll set up a bucket policy so we can actually make these public. The first thing I'm gonna do is just make this folder public. So once you've done that, we can now go over to our bucket again, over to properties, and under our permissions, we can add a bucket policy. So Amazon S3 makes this a little difficult, but it's not too hard. We have a policy generator. So all we need to do here is go over to this page, select S3 bucket policy. We're gonna allow, the principle is gonna be an asterisk, we're going to select an action. So you don't wanna select too many actions here or you'll give too much control to just the general public. But what we want is we want get object. Now all this means is we can uh, users can just grab an object. Uh, essentially an object is just a file, so pretty straightforward. So the resource name, it gives us an example here. We're gonna copy this, paste this in here. And for our bucket name, we already know that. Yours might be a bit different. Mine is videoupload.codecourse.com. And the key name, which again is kind of the terminology here for a folder, is just videos. So we have the bucket name and videos. We're gonna add this statement. That's added it in there. We're gonna go ahead and click generate policy. We're gonna copy this. And now we can go back over to here, paste it in, hit save. Click close. I'm going to go ahead and hit save here as well. And we're done. So now we're all set up to very, very easily implement the ClipChamp button to be able to record from webcam or drag and drop video files to be uploaded to our bucket into this folder. So you can go ahead and keep this open just to make sure that you've set everything up properly. So head over to your ClipChamp dashboard and we'll go ahead and cover this in the next part.